Who would have thought that Seiko in 2024 can still create exciting heritage non-prospect watches, which basically anyone could love, even the purists. When Seiko wants, Seiko delivers. The brand is able to produce with accuracy iconic watches from their past. And this time, the brand revived another legendary watch, making good use of their new GMT 6R caliber, the Navigator SPB411J1. I have to be honest with you, when I started to deepen my love for wristwatches, the vintage Seikos were an attractive path for me. And out of the documented popular ones was definitely the Seiko Navigator Timer GMT, aka the 6117-8000. This was a forgotten gem of the brand until recently when they decided to recreate this model into the SPB411J1. Expensive, I said at the moment, but through diverse opportunities I was able to grab one for myself, so today expect to see an owner's review. Because I've been wearing this Heritage Seiko with pleasure for more than a week already, leaving a lot of interesting watches in the box, but I honestly haven't had enough of this one. I do love how it wears and I'm pretty fascinated by the chameleonic appearance which makes the watch to work with different straps despite its heritage 90mm width. And wearing it sustained for such a long time, I concluded that this GMT offers a lot. It's complex, it's well-sized, it's adaptive, and yes, I do think this can be considered as a one-watch collection. If I was able to wear it more than one week without the need of another type of watch on a wrist, it means that this design is able to replace a lot of watch genres. And besides being a genuine GADA watch, this GMT was missing only 5 bar and a second hand loomed in order to be an ISO standard watch. That complete and solid this watch feels. I see this model as a practical traveler's watch with this GMT function which hosts the same 6R54 movement as the Alpinist GMT or the Marine Master GMT. But the difference is, out of dimension, this Heritage Navigator feels to be the thinnest, wearing ideally on the wrist. And that's very cool because Seiko really managed to keep this vintage aspect in proportions, respecting the height as well. The design of this reissue, the Navigator, is based on their 70s principles, with the focus on protecting the crown. This one being the Seiko 5 Sports attributes with the resist crown at 4 o'clock. Actually, the dial and the hands feels inspired from the shielded Seiko 5 designs as well. I am a fan of Teneo watches and I have and had many Teneos, but none like this one. This is unique because it's narrower and longer. It feels elegant and wearable, allowing the bezel to be accessible basically from any position. On the accuracy of the reissue, indeed, if you are a true Seiko fan nowadays, you should consider for sure sourcing 19mm straps because the majority of these vintage Seikos are based on 19mm lug width. The quality is exceptional and out of the Seiko lineups this 411 reminds me of the King Seiko watches. Probably because of the brushing finishing or maybe because of the bracelet. But definitely you can feel the quality brushing but also the small polished accents which makes the watch to pop. It feels premium, especially thanks to the refined grey summer style with highly polished markers which offers the brilliance and the details of the Grand Seiko markers appearance. The side of the case is very nice and looks thin, the aggressive Teneau shape has a slim profile balanced by a thick coinage bezel which works through friction in both ways. To the 13mm case thickness there is added the case back which doesn't look that big but also the discreet boxed crystal. The overall appearance is of a fully brushed case matted with a concentric radial brushing on the case and on the bezel. And here I have to point out the thick engraving of the GMT numerals, but also the oversized loom dot which allows operating the GMT time zones on low light conditions. So the matted case in combo with the grey sunburst is very nice, it's iconic for vintage Seikos and new to me. In fact the dial is a bit darker than the stainless steel tone, but it brightens in strong lights, managing to mute the highly polished baguettes which are finished on an interesting linear pattern as my Grand Seiko Sienbin. Between the stainless steel case and the grey tone of the dial, we have an interesting black chapter ring with a concentric discrete pattern, which interrupts brilliantly the grey tone, reminding us of the vintage racing Seikos. And then the hands, as I was mentioning, they are executed into a modern way with a facet highly polished and one brushed, made in the same spirit of the iconic Seiko 5 hands. 
and there is a tiny accent that adds a bit of color to the refined elegant dial. I think this red GMT hand is discreet enough to not disturb the dial, being sized enough to indicate a secondary time zone without competing with the normal hour one. But in the same time it feels that the hand is funny looking like the hands of a Tyrannosaurus Rex, short and pretty much useless. And as Loom this model respects the original Loom layout with discrete minute markers placed on the black chapter ring, on the hands and on the short GMT1, but also in abundance on the oversized Loom pip. This tone is green, clearly Lumi bright, but not that long lasting. Compared to the original model, the dial in essence is almost entirely correctly executed with the exception of the navigator timer label, but also the date trimming, which I think is horribly executed, ruining the refined atmosphere of the dial. If we compare it to the original model, that one had an engraved chamfer more pronounced, where in this case it's pretty much diminished. And because I was mentioning the association with the King Seiko line, indeed, due to the faceted bracelet formed from five links, on the bracelet combo the watch offers the best comfort. I do like the vintage pattern proposed with brushed links being polished on the side but also on the tiny elegant clasp which I find it superior to any Prospects premium Seikos. However, due to the unique color of the case in combo with the grey refined dial, this watch can be a strap monster as well, it works brilliantly with bright tone natios, even leather as I was matching it with this bright burgundy color. As specs, this navigator measures 39mm with 45mm as lug tip to lug tip, 13mm in height, 19mm between the lugs and weights, with the bracelet around 121 grams. The watch offers a non-screwing crown which still ensures 100m for resistance, a box sapphire crystal and a bi-directional tight friction bezel where you will need to put a bit of strength to move it. Inside we have the new caliber 6R54 with a GMT function and a date, beating at 28600 BPH having 72 hours power reserve. This is a limited edition model of 4000 pieces, but I'd say it's enough to still grab it as retail if you really want a true vintage and appealing Seiko, although on the grey market the prices are even better. And as I accumulated result, the SPB411 will qualify as a brave beater on the channel in the position number 57, alongside other iconic heritage Seikos, because when Seiko wants, Seiko delivers. So that's it, hope you enjoyed this episode, with the usual curiosity, what do you think about this new Heritage Seiko Navigator GMT? Please let me know in the comments below. And as usual, if you're new around, please consider subscribing for future episodes. Thank you very much, thanks for watching, and until next time, be brave and stay safe.